What is your motivation for relating with God and the people you encounter daily? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Millions watched the Fox reality show, Joe Millionaire. The premise of the show was that they would take an ordinary guy making a working man's salary, clean him up, put him up in a castle in France, and then tell a number of ladies that he was heir to a fortune and whoever he picks will be his girl. The test would be that when the glass girl is chosen, the truth would be told that he was not really a millionaire, and we would see if she loved him for who he was or for his money. Now, if you watched the conclusion of that show, you know the woman did choose to stay with Joe Millionaire, even though he was really only Joe, hourly wage earner. For this choice, the show gave both the girl and the guy a million dollars to split between them. It had seen true love had blossomed, but soon after the show ended, their love quickly dissolved. Now what made that show so appealing to many is that they knew that those women could have cared less if it was Joe, Tom, Dick, or Harry, as long as Millionaire was his last name, and they wanted to see their response when they found out who he truly was. Because we know that so many relationships are not built on love for the other person, but on a selfish motive, focusing on what can I get from it. You might also remember the reaction people gave former guest Jean's model, Anna Nicole Smith, when she married Texas millionaire J. Edward Marshall, who was old enough to be her great-grandfather, and when she told the world she married him not for his money, but because she loved him. People simply laughed and said, right. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus and his disciples unexpectedly land on the shore of Gennesaret, known as the Paradise of Galilee, for its rich soil that allowed harvests of walnuts, dates, olive, figs, and grapes. It was also a fishing town. People quickly flocked to Jesus to have their ailments healed, bringing along their sick relatives to be cured. They were confident that touching any part of his garment would heal them. Perhaps they were more interested in the healing than in the preaching of Jesus. After a healing takes place, does their faith in Jesus increase or dissipate shortly thereafter? We ask ourselves the same question today. Do we become prayerful only when we are in need, desperate for a solution to, say, our financial problems, our sickness and those of our loved ones, or for a new business we plan to put up, or for a relationship that has become fragile and or broken? Can we praise God through our storms and thank Him for blessings received? Do we pray for ourselves only and those in our close circle, our loved ones, is Jesus a remedy for our tragedy, or is Jesus a brother and God, a father that we genuinely adore? These are questions we ask ourselves today. For our relationships may just be temporary and need-based. We may use people to get us into jobs or financial deals, to get near to people of influence, or to acquire power and status. But when differences happen, we leave them totally out of our lives. In our church, our renewal community may also just be places of convenience. For many just go to church on three occasions, baptism, marriage, and to bury someone close. For a good number two, these may just be places to meet people who can satisfy secular needs. When things sour, they leave. Sometimes our homes become just a dormitory, a boarding house, a temporary shelter for our grown-up children who go in and out as they please. There is no gratitude or respect accorded to parents who do not really need to ask for such, but in gratefulness and respect, children must give. But how, you may ask, should we relate to people? Plainly and simply, love out of gratitude to God. We are to think of them as blessings and not as burdens, regardless of status and of their treatment of us. They are our pathways to holiness and to a heavenly destination. They may not be as loving and as caring as we would want them to be, but they are blessings, and blessings in disguise nonetheless, for us because they are our gauge of our obedience to the commandment of love. On the other hand, instead of making use of God, let us live in His presence and recognize His presence in people. When we lift up our needs and wants to Him, let us do so not only with expectant faith, but with gratefulness for whatever is given us. There may be a million reasons to relate with God and with people, but there is only one reason that matters. It is pure and genuine love for eternity.
Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, purify my intentions. Redirect my motivations. Let your grace lead me to love the unlovable, to treat with kindness those who cannot return it, to see the goodness in people, and to just praise you in all the circumstances of my life. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.